digital experts seeking to fully engage all authorities as a means of broadening the monthly cleanup activity, especially in rural Gambia. Samuel Ba, GRTS. As part of their quest to contribute to their quota to national development and health for all by 2015, help the Gambia needy children, a group of Gambians based in Germany donated medical equipment and material to the Ministry of Health and Social Welfare through the Serekunda General Hospital. Ominjai reports. This needy children is a group of patriotic Gambians based in Germany and in contributing their quarter to national development and complementing government's efforts towards the health sector, they have donated medical equipment to the Minister of Health and Social Welfare through the Sarikunda Hospital. The donated items included laundry machines, lab materials, examination beds, first aid boxes, weighing scales, among others. And today, yet mark another presentation of um, gift of medical equipment and materials um, donated to Ministry of Health on behalf of Serekunda General Hospital um, today. The organization, the are Gambian-based personnel in Germany, um, which include about 11 members, and they are sponsors. And they feel they could do, what they could do for the Gambian health sector is to do their own quota in national development to improve the health status of all Gambians and none alike in, the, in, in this sub-region. The Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Omar C., in receiving the donated items, commended the Germany-based group for the move. C. also indicated that some of these equipments could be used in other health facilities in rural Gambia when the need arises. Part of it and most of it will be taken to the rural poor people. So I will urge you to work with the permanent sector to promote this distribution uh, with immediate effect. We have a lot of items already gathered over the past few days. And then this concern will be part of those that are going to be sent up country. This donation, according to Baba Njai, the chief executive officer of the Saikuda Hospital, is a clear manifestation that Gambians in the diaspora are joining efforts with the government to improve the health sector. Uminjai, GRTS. Child Protection Alliance on Friday held a day's deliberation forum on the theme protection of children from sexual exploitation and abuse. The forum brought together relevant stakeholders. Boba SMCC reports. The number of tourists visiting the Gambia continue to raise, thus raising fears that there could be numerous reports of child sex tourism ensuing in the coastal areas. Child Protection Alliance an organization responsible for the protection of the rights of children brought together stakeholders on a platform to find possible measures to prevent sexual exploitation and any form of abuse that tend to victimize children. Every year, a million children are believed to be exploited by means of child trafficking, child pornography especially, with the uncontrolled rise of the social networking media among children and sexual exploitation of children in travel and tourism destinations. In mitigating this felony against children, personnel responsible for the rights of children call for concerted efforts to hold these practices. The safety and welfare of children is everybody's business. You could be a neighbor, a friend, a parent, a relative, a child minder, a teacher, a doctor, or working for an organization which has contact with children and young people. Therefore, it should be a collective responsibility of all to ensure that children are safe from all forms of abuse and exploitation and to take pledge for the creation of enabling ad atmospheres for the life, survival, and development of all children. Given the recent UNICEF's 2003 report, the Gambia is a vulnerable target for sex tourism given the number of unidentified, unscrupulous suspected pedophiles entering the country in search for a low profile location and excuse to commit these crimes with impunity by taking advantage of the poverty striking families. The Minister of Tourism and Culture, Fatuma's job, believes that child protection is a cornerstone of her ministry's policy and there are legal frameworks ratified to prosecute perpetrators. Over the years, as you know, the government has put in place legal frameworks aimed at promoting 
the rights of children, as well as their protection from all forms of abuse and exploitation. And for your information, Ms. Duke, we have recently started the process of amending the Tourism Offences Act of 2003. We felt that the act was not stringent enough. We have now, together with the Ministry of Justice, amended the act to make provision for a 24 hours court. 24 hours court in that if there is any incident of child abuse, for instance, there will be a magistrate available to make sure that case is heard because most of the time there is an incident. By the time it reaches the court, the tourist already left the country. So this is in the process of being enacted by the National Assembly. It was approved by cabinet last week. In the Gambia, there are laws provided for the protection of children, notably the Tourism Offenses Act 2003 and other relevant laws determined to punish any person who sexually abuses a child with a hefty imprisonment term. The Basin Job and Activists demanded these laws be upheld by the Tourism Ministry. I call on all service providers in the tourism sector to embrace the Gambia Tourism Code of Conduct. I also challenge the people working in the tourism industry to be very vigilant and to report cases of abuse and exploitation of children in those settings. I call on the Ministry of Tourism and Culture to recognize the existence of sexual exploitation of children in the tourism industry and to monitor and ensure the implementation of the Tourism Code of Conduct as well as the Tourism Offenses Act to, pr uh, to protect children from all sorts of sexual exploitation. With the practice of such felony in the rise, collective and community action is needed to prevent and end commercial sexual exploitation of children in destination Gambia. Buba SMCC, GRTS. We'll now take the first break. The news continues right after. back. Syrian opposition leaders say they are disappointed by American President Barack Obama's decision to seek congressional permission for a military strike on Syria. They say they can't understand how you can promise to help and then change your mind in the last minute. President Obama made the announcement Saturday as the UN weapon inspectors left Syria. But as we hear in this report, the US President made the decision at the very last minute. on political theater, it was high drama just past high noon, as President Obama told the world he had pulled back from the brink of a military strike against Syria. I will seek authorization for the use of force from the American people's representatives in Congress. Aides to the president say Mr. Obama decided to go in a different direction at almost the last minute. At approximately 6 p.m. Friday, the president made the stunning change in plans to seek congressional authorization and then went for a walk. A 45-minute walk, in fact, with his chief of staff, Dennis McDonough. At approximately 7 p.m., the president announced his decision to his national security staff, sparking a heated debate. He then started to spread the word, calling Vice President Biden, Secretary of State John Kerry, and Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel. Saturday morning, Mr. Obama convened a principals meeting with top national security and intelligence officials to finalize the decision. The question is, what are we, we collectively, what are we in the world going to do about it? Just hours before the president's abrupt move, Secretary I'm Kerry had made a passionate case for urgent action. Instead of uh, being tucked safely in their beds at home, we saw rows of children lying side by side 
sprawled on a hospital floor, all of them. 